recently, iDubbbz has released an apology video. What is he apologizing for? Well, judging by the tone and gravitas of his sniveling little apology video, you would think that he used to be a plantation owner, or a Nazi, or something of the sort. What he's actually apologizing for is his own content, mostly the Content Cop series. Now listen, there is absolutely nothing wrong with a creator growing, maturing. A lot of YouTubers have done that transition successfully over time. It doesn't happen instantly. You can't just snap your fingers and now you have a new audience. It has to be a gradual process. But iDubbbz is not going about it in the right way whatsoever. If you knew nothing about iDubbbz Content Cop series and you were to go off just the information that he talks about in his apology video, you would think the Content Cop series was just this racist, bigoted garbage. Nothing but racism, racism. That's not the case at all. Yes, he said the N-word a couple of times. He said the F-word a couple of times. It was 2016. It was edgy shock humor. That was its purpose. But 95%, the rest of the video, was him making very valid points and criticisms about these other creators and their content. People who at the time were not being called out. Content Cop ranks among one of the most highly influential and respected YouTube series of all time. And he's ashamed of it now. He said he's going to regret it and he's, he should pay for it for the rest of his life. YouTube videos. And what led our boy Ian to this path? Did this just happen? Did he just wake up one day and his balls fell off? Or, or what's going on here? I'll tell you what happened. One word. The name. Anissa. For a while, I felt like if I changed my content over time, that people would see that as a reflection of who I am and what I value. Uh, but I, I'm starting to realize that that is a very weak... Yeah. And passive way to, you know, run my channel and live my life. You know, if I'm gonna have the balls <laughs> to go to Tana's uh, fan meetup and say slurs at her and then make a video about how it's okay to say slurs. I can't believe this, sir. You said the N word. I, I think I should have the balls to make an apology video and take accountability for the mistakes I've made. So that's what this video is. I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel. <laughs> and I've also created a culture of uh, apathy. I don't know, a lot of, like, cruelty as well. Next time someone's being mean to you, just say, okay, or even better, okay. Like, you know, some of the videos I've made have been very, not edgy. I don't think they, they you know, some of these videos were edgy. I think they were just outright cruel. The top seven signs of an edgelord. So I don't want people to, you know, get it confused about, you know, where I stand. I have made some cruel, hurtful content and I need to acknowledge that, and I'm really sorry that it's taken me this long to acknowledge it.
In December of 2015, iDubs uploaded his first content cop video on a reaction YouTuber named Jinx Reload. The series would become an almost immediate success and run from 2015 to 2017. iDubs content cop videos were known for their use of irony and their sometimes vicious critiques of other YouTube creators, some of whom were extremely popular at the time. Utilizing edgy and irreverent humor, iDubs would go on to release content cop videos on creators such as Fine Bros, Keemstar, Leafy, Tana Manju, and Ricegum, to name a few. At the time, Content Cop was one of the most highly influential YouTube series ever created. However, no one really wanted to be featured in a content cop video, with featured creators seeing significant damage done to their careers afterwards. At the time, Ian was on top of the world, untouchable, but at last, it had to end. I understand end. why there needs to be a content cop here on YouTube. It's to protect people like Jinx, because he doesn't know his content's cancerous. Tana Mon... Mon J Tana Mon J Tana Mongoose is a storytime YouTuber who has amassed millions of subscribers across the platform. On December 10th, 2016, seemingly entirely out of the blue, literally for no reason, Tana tweeted out, At iDubs, so 3 million people subscribe to you and you use, you openly say the N word and the R word? Kill yourself. Later, of course, she deleted the tweet. It took to Snapchat to claim that she was only joking. Come on now, Mongoose. Come on. On January 21st, 2017, Tana held a show in the San Francisco area where her subscribers could come and meet her in person, VIP, for a cheap Two hundred and a hundred bucks. Little did she know, pure evil was lurking nearby. What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. We have got to control the border. And Mojo, like, like literally, if Idubs broke both of his legs and lost all of his subscribers, I would be genuinely happy. Like he's a terrible person. Like you're white and you just say the N word. I tweeted him and I I don't remember exactly what I said. I'm sure you can find it, but it was like you have five million subscribers. You say the N word in your video. Like that's not cool. Kill yourself. I guess the guy that came to my show trying to get me to say the N-word in my video that I'm crying over, that I was terrified over, literally contemplated, like, canceling my tour. Now I have to, like, get all these metal detectors, all these security, because I'm fucking terrified. This guy that legitimately terrified me was Idubs. We're going on a road trip. We're going to see Tana Among You at the Tana Among You concert in San Francisco. Road trip! The irony and pure hypocrisy of Tana telling Idubs to kill himself for using the N word was put on full display. Then I totally thought it just meant like call me. Tana was a storytime YouTuber who was known not only for her toxic behavior but also for embellishment of her quote unquote stories. Oh my 
life that in God. Today's the Tanamangu concert. Oh my God, today's the Tanamangu concert. <laughs> He's angry. You know, what is he going to do? What is he capable of? Is he going to hurt my manager, my tour manager? Is he going to hurt somebody that I love? Tell me something and be honest with yourself now. Does this man really look like a boxer in any way, shape, or form? Wow! And yet somehow that seems to be the timeline we're all living in. I heard a joke once. A man goes to doctor, says he's depressed. Life seems harsh and cruel. Says he feels all alone in a threatening world. The doctor says treatment is simple. The great clown, Pagliacci, is in town. Go see him. That should pick you up. Man bursts into tears. But doctor, he says, I am Pagliacci. Good joke. Everybody laugh. Roll on snare drum. It was an absolutely hell of a fight. What would you like to say to all your fans and supporters that were rooting for you here today? Ah, uh, oh, that shit's so hard. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate everyone. The original Creator Clash was held on May 14th, 2022 at the Youngling Center in Tampa Bay, Florida, USA. The headlining fight for this event was between iDubs himself and someone called Dr. Mike. The inaugural broadcast of this event was deemed to be a success, selling over 100,000 pay-per-view buys. However, it's quite possible that Creator Clash 1 was too much of a success, seeing as how it led to iDubs and his husband Anisia deciding to hold a second event creatively titled Creator Clash 2. And that event was, well, a complete catastrophe. I have some bad news to share with you. Uh, I really don't want to share it. I, f I feel terrible. Uh, this year has been a rough one, but uh, this is the path that I chose. So I think it's best to be transparent. For Creator Clash 2, you know, despite it being a fun event and despite good fights and a lot of creators sacrificing a lot of time, uh, money, and energy, uh, we lost. $250,000 on the event. Unfortunately, we didn't even reach the break-even point. Right, we're $250,000 in the red. Creator Clash 2 took place on April 15th, 2023 at the Ama Ama Amelie Arena in Tampa Bay, Florida. In theory, the proceeds from the event were supposed to go to different various charities. However, CC2 ended up only selling 50,000 pay-per-view buys and thus, as a result, actually lost money. Around $250,000 to be exact. I'm not going to get into all the drama with Froggy Fresh and Sam Hyde, but almost certainly the negative buzz around the event contributed to the failure of Creator Clash 2. But who was the real architect of this truly embarrassing failure? Was it Ian Idubs himself, Mr. Checkoff to my wife, Mr. IBS? Man, I just want to ask you if you've always been shitting your pants. Or was it someone else, someone unseen, someone slippery, someone controlling events from afar, someone like... 
As terrible as the Holocaust was, it doesn't make sense science-wise to say that you are eating the same as somebody who's a size zero. I urge everyone to check out Colossal is Crazy's interview with Lion Maker. It's surreal. Yeah, I mean, and he went to jail, and he then he deserved to go to jail. Like, which is whatever. Too bad. They're bringing their significant other that you dislike greatly. As you can see, we are truly dealing with a rare breed of woman. Well, actually, sadly, in the West, I guess she's not so rare anymore. This is Anissa. I'm not even going to try to attempt to say her last name. She is Idub's wife. Yes, he actually married her. Aside from being a complete bane to Ian's existence, she is also a content creator, Twitch streamer, and OnlyFans model. Wow, what a modern woman. You gotta be more careful with who you bring on. Exactly, Ian. Exactly. There may or may not have been some neglect. Well, the more you Photoshop, the more you run away from self-acceptance. My photos are not real. Photos are not real. As terrible as the Holocaust was, yeah. you know what you're doing? What am I doing? You're breaking my trust and in turn my heart. All the little tumblerinas telling me that I'm cheating on my boy. Despite all I-dubs has said to the contrary, there has seemed to be a great dip in his quality of life, which has been reflected in his quality of work. Creator Clash 2 was an abject failure. None of his more recent videos have performed up to their predecessor standards. A wife is supposed to be a life partner. She's supposed to walk by your side through fire, through trials and tribulations. Anissa, however, is none of these things. She does none of these things. Instead, she belittles Ian, insults him, and even embarrasses him live on stream. At the end of the day, however, we have no real way of knowing what really goes on behind closed doors. Perhaps Anissa is Ian's queen. Perhaps she uplifts him. Perhaps she loves him. Or perhaps not. Your brain is not at a place yet where you're like, I'm doing this for me and I don't give a f what anyone thinks. At the end of the day, I'm not really sure what the future holds for iDubs. I have absolutely no idea if he'll manage to find redemption or not. But if one day he does wish to be redeemed, then I have an idea. So listen up, Ian, and hear me out, because I truly believe that this can save your whole career. The idea is that you make a new content cop. You play it just like the Rice Gum Paul video and market it as though it's it's about your own old content. You're finally taking yourself to task for all the allegedly toxic and hurtful things you said and did. So when everyone thinks the content cop is on you and your own content, you instead reveal when the video drops that it's on Anissa. You don't tell her about this at all. She has no idea and she's completely blindsided. And simultaneously, at the same time you drop the video, you file for divorce. In the video, you take her to task for every single toxic ass thing she's ever done to you or to others. Yes, it will mean the end of your relationship, but Ian, your relationship is dog shit. I truly believe this is the only way you can get back your career, your reputation, and most importantly, your balls. <laughs>